You know, a lot of people think I wear this robe for effect, and I actually don't, depending on the temperature and the humidity. It's extremely comfortable. I sewed this together myself. It's made out of 100% twill hemp. Yes, boys and girls, it's made out of hemp. Not only that, I sewed it myself. So, no, I'm not wearing this for effect. It's actually extremely comfortable. They say cotton breathes, but nothing breathes like hemp. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I don't know how actually people would uh, approach this video because it's kind of a dry topic, but it's an incredibly important one. And I absolutely love making videos about stuff that nobody else on YouTube is making videos about. And it's actually about a primer, and primers run throughout all things. Uh, if you don't know anything about me, I've written a lot of books. I translate ancient Greek. I've been translating ancient Pali for eons. I uh, used to be a Rusko-Anglijski Prevodchik, means Russian English translator. I've even done some work for the government and law enforcement agencies. There's nothing finer than being paid $200 an hour to yell at people in Russian. You know, they'd be Russian criminals, and they'd yell at them in English, and I'd yell at them in Russian. It's like, yay, this is like stress relief, and I get to yell at people. Um, but anyway, um, according to my teachers and professors in college, I was taking college courses back when I was in high school. After high school, I'd go over to University of Kentucky. They said I was a parent prodigy on ancient languages. Talk about something that won't make you any money. And I'm not trying to get rich in life. But I'd like to talk about uh, primers. And uh, this is something you never learned in high school or college. And you should have. And uh, I've also, too, extensively studied uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. I mean, a lot. I mean, I got a lot of books on ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. I'm a big fan of... Uh, uh, ancient Egypt, but not in a conventional sense, like, oh, look at the cool artwork and stuff. I'm actually interested in the primer that runs uh, through the hieroglyphics. And um, there were, just as there is today, there's a church liturgy. And uh, unless you're uh, like a priest, if you're just like a common doofus on the street, even though they're speaking English, you, you don't know what they're saying. So two uh, languages, one of them is the language of the priests, the other one is the lingua franca, you know, just common English. Um, how things, how quickly things diverge is uh, quite amazing. I mean, even though Shakespeare, for example, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare, is written in English, and, you know, there's nothing there that's cryptic. Most people today, when they read Shakespeare, really, most people, it's like, you know, this is English, and I can read it, but I don't know what it says. <laughs> Um, so, um, by the way, and this is an example, I don't know if you've ever done this or not, it's a very crude example, you don't have to have studied uh, uh, the priest language of ancient Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics to acknowledge the fact that if you've read, like, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and that's just one example that most people have read, it's completely nonsensical. If you were to uh, legitimately ask yourself the question, does this make any sense, you know, for an advanced culture to, you would is completely nonsensical. It, it's absolute uh, gibberish. I mean, there's, you know, there's a, a string of, uh, of commonality or flow of thought, but it, it's just gibberish. And this is one book of many, and this is on the history of the Rosetta Stone. I don't know if you know what the hell the Rosetta Stone is. And this, uh, there's uh, ancient Egyptian and uh, there's Coptic, and there's uh, Ancient Greek on the bottom. This is how we were able to uh, decipher uh, what uh, Ancient Egyptian is. And Ancient Egyptian, and it's a priest language, uh, was lost. And I'm getting to the primer here. I'm going to try to make this really quick. It was a lost language as uh, early as, I think, about uh, uh, the first century BCE. So um, that's a... You know, in other words, it's been completely lost for a really, really long time. But the, the short story of this entire book, and there are many books about the history of the Rosetta Stone, it was found, and from this we're actually able to backwards engineer, if you will, the nature of what uh, the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics said. But the problem was, is that a bunch of uh, pin-headed uh, academic stooges are the ones that uh, used, they went from the ancient Greek to the Egyptian, and th this is just one reason among many. And there are countless examples of this in uh, ancient Greek, uh, like the works of uh, Amblichus, Plotinus. No Greek scholar today, no matter how good they are, understands what the hell. They can translate the Parmenides, for example. I don't know if you know what the hell the Parmenides is. 
They have no idea basically what the hell it says. Um, it, without a primer, you can't understand it. Uh, something is extremely complex, however, it's actually very simplex. You have no idea, even if you have the Rosetta Stone. As an example, I'm using this as a primer. And this is the clavis or the key that is pointed to. It's like, and of course, the text that is mostly missing, and this is a true image of the Rosetta Stone, is the ancient Egyptian at the top. But you can't decipher it without actually understanding what is being said. That, the, the, the issue that we have is that we can read ancient Egyptians. Well, should we know what it says there? And this is not true. And this is where the clavis or the primer comes in into play is that we can read the ancient Egyptian, but these idiot academic stooges, and I am insulting them on purpose, they're not telling you what it's actually saying. And this is, this is a metaphysical language of priests. And these uh, scholastic uh, transliterations of the ancient Egyptian are nonsensical. If you've ever read the Egyptian Book of the Dead or uh, 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 other ancient Egyptian stele, uh, from the ancient Egyptian, or uh, tomb inscriptions, or any of the inscriptions on the funerary uh, relics of uh, Tutankhamun, or anybody else, uh, Ramesses the Great, they're nonsensical. They, you know, you kind of understand what's being said, but you, uh, I'm trying to actually, you know, trying to get to the nuance here and yet be as simple as possible. Being able to translate something doesn't mean you're actually uh, conveying true meaning. And uh, this is uh, the reason for so many countless things. And you were not taught this stuff in high school or college. And I'd like to give you some other examples and stuff that I'm familiar with, like the Parmenides of Plato. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry Greek scholar throughout time immemorial, and you just ask a, a native Greek person, like, I can't read that stuff. Some of the words they obviously can. But if you try to read the Parmenides... It's, it's not going to... Well, here's another example, and it's a free download. And I've talked about this book endlessly. It was uh, Nikola Tesla's favorite book, Theoria Philosophia Naturalis, Theory of Natural Philosophy by Roger Boscovich. The dude did not die that many centuries ago. Now, if you download the book, Latin is on one side and English is on the other side. You forget about the Latin. I've had several years of Latin. My Latin's pretty rusty. But if you try to read the English text, your mind will literally explode. If you think I'm joking, you should go download Theoria Philosophia Naturalis by Roger Boscovich, Theory of Nash. It's in English on the right-hand side. I dare you to even read one page of that. You won't even make it through one sentence. What the hell is this saying? Without a primer, you can't understand something. William Shakespeare, it's in plain English, and people can read it. But 99.9% .9 of Americans, they, they don't know what's being said, really, through the text. They, uh, they don't know. They can read it, but they can't make heads or tails out of it. True meaning requires a primer or a clavis. Um, for example, Polly, and I've been debating these fools for ages and ages, decades I've been debating them because I'm a, a, I'm a Polly translator. I'm also, too, a member of the Polly Text Society based out of London, England. Without a primer... No Pali translation is accurate, nor logical. They're contradictory. They're nonsensical. Um, all those yellow-robed guys running around Southeast Asia, Laos, Burma, Thailand, Ceylon, so, you know, the Buddhists. You think those are Buddhists? Well, they're really not. I call them Binos, or Buddhists in name only. They have, they teach other people farcical rubbish that is not in doctrine. You know, atta ka so saranam gatika, atta sarana nana saran. The soul is a refuge with none other as a refuge. The only thing that is called the light and the refuge and the eternal is the soul. And yet, all those yellow robed guys in Southeast Asia say, well, the Buddhism teaches anatta, and anatta means no soul, and then Buddhism is. That's not doctrinal at all. Anatta, and I'm the world's foremost expert on this topic. Anatta is used in a pejorative fashion instead of 22 different things. This is not the soul, that is not the soul. This via negativa, this is apophaticism of objective negation, which of course culminates in subjective synthesis, which is theurgy, which is sati, which is samadhi. This is true uh, ontological subjective synthesis through objective negation. This is the identification phenomenology that's taught in every form of monistic monism, both Indian and Greek. It's the basis of all original Buddhism, and of course, 
Uh, it wasn't called Buddhism. Buddhism is actually a, a recent term of invention. Gautama was asked what his teachings were to be called, and he said, uh, and this is in Samyutta Nikaya, uh, Book 5, Verse 4, Sagata Vagapali of the Samyutta Nikaya, he said, uh, he said his teachings were to be called Brahmayana, or the path to Brahma, not the path to the Absolute. It was just nothing other than monistic monism. This uh, objective, i.e. materialistic negation, I don't just mean materialistic in the absolute sense of pure materiality, also to spiritual materiality. Forms, feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, rupa, veda, nasana, sankara, nivinyana, nama rupa, uh, anatta. Uh, the psychophysical is not my soul. And of course, my soul implies possession. But without a primer, you've had thousands of years of these yellow-robed idiots, and they're called Terawadins, they used to be called Sarwastivadins, which uh, literally translates as materialism, or Sarwastivada, means this is all there is, is i.e. materialism, teaching that Buddhism taught that there is no soul. Without a primer, nobody understands what the hell is going on. This is applicable to every branch of science. You have literally an insane religion teaching about uh, believing and telling people this stuff exists. Things that have no basis in reality, never been the input or output of any experiment ever done. Virtual photons, virtual particles, they're looking for the graviton particle, the particle that mediates uh, gravity. Well, no such thing exists. You know, this completely uh, shorts in the face of Occam's razor. It's contradictory to logic, wisdom, and common sense. Without a primer or a foundation into the nature of reality, you can't understand anything. But with it, everything is understandable. If you give someone a primer, and this is applicable to countless fields, countless fields, whether that be field theory, whether it be metaphysics, whether it be original Buddhism, whether it be uh, the works of uh, Plato, or uh, trying to understand Plotinus. By the way, there's only six translations of Plotinus. One is incomplete. The best translation is incomplete one by the most famous and intelligent ancient Greek translator who ever lived. He translated more ancient Greek than anybody. Why? Thomas Taylor. Even his partial translation is inaccurate. It's the best, but it's still inaccurate. The most famous one is by this uh, fat, roly-poly guy named A.H. Armstrong. It's horrific. The guy is, uh, was a, uh, a crypto-Christian. Uh, 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 the guy didn't understand. He wrote a, a book on the indefinite uh, uh, principle of, uh, of uh, Platinian monism. It's completely nonsensical. These people don't have a primer. The, the same uh, French and uh, English uh, scholastic fools that tried to... Uh, Backwards engineer from the ancient Greek uh, to the ancient uh, Egyptian, the, uh, use this as a primer, is Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone is not just the Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone means the clavis for key to understanding. But the people that actually used the Rosetta Stone were academic stooges. And this is the reason why all, and it's not the entire reason, but it's, it's a great reason, why all translations of uh, ancient Egyptian are nonsensical twaddle. If you don't believe me, just download the best translation uh, that exists, which is total garbage, of the Book of the Dead from the ancient Egypt. It's ridiculous. It's nonsensical garbage. These people don't have a primer. A primer into an ancient, archaic uh, priest language. You know, it was not the lingua franca. It was not the, the language of the land. Anyway, um, I'd like to make this uh, one video and make it simple. People hate it when I drone on, which maybe I'm doing right now, actually. The scientists, for example, when it uh, comes to their... Uh, their bubble or their picture on the nature of the universe and uh, you know cosmic mechanics and their their quest for a grand unified theory, which they're never going to find because they think everything is atomistic. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you're an atomist, everything is a particle. You know, graviton particles, virtual particles. It, it, that, that's just Star Trek garbage. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. Mother Nature is not a crazy hooker on crack with a bag of magic bumping particles. These people are literally insane. They're running a religion, a belief system. Virtual particles are not the inputs or outputs of any experiment ever done. Magnetism is not mediated by virtual particles. Uh, no branch of science has ever defined a field. Or the, you want to use the Greek word? Let's use the word kora. What is a field, by the way? If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand what it is. A field is an ether perturbation modality. It is literally that simple. Just as ice, water, and steam are just different temperature and pressure modalities of water, yes? 
You know, a child even knows that ice, water, and steam are the same thing under different circumstances. Yes, attributional states from uh, temperature and pressure. Yes, yeah, it's all the same stuff. All fields are the exact same stuff, just like water and ice, water, and steam. Um, there's only one conjugate geometry of the universe. And if you're able to give someone this primer, and no one's given you this primer, primer anywhere in life, not college, not high school, not uh, any advanced learning center, I mean, any prestigious place like uh, Yale or Harvard or you know any private school. You say, little Johnny, and by the way, I made a primer. I worked hard. At, well, actually, I didn't have to work that hard on it. Actually, making it look nice and you know summing it up into... I made this for everybody to download. I put it in a video like about a month and a half ago. This is the Aurea Sapientia. This is the actual primer or clavis of the entire universe summed up. One side is uh, metaphysics, the other side is cosmic mechanics, or respectively the cosmos nemitos, and over here is the cosmos sethitos. This is a free download. I posted that in the video. But without a primer, you can't understand anything. You actually have to have a foundation of any area of study that you're interested in or that you want to learn about. Without that, if you build a, a structure upon a faulty, uh, illogical, unwise, nonsensical, contradictory foundation, then everything, of course, is garbage. You could take the best building materials and the best architects, and if they try to build on a you know, shaky foundation or you know, a jello foundation like the sand, you know, it's going to be garbage. It, it all collapses without a correct foundation built upon logic, wisdom, facts, and, uh, and Occam's razor, then nothing can be true that's built upon it. Absolutely nothing. The conjugate geometry of the universe, I mean, uh, you don't need a, a big fat book to understand that everything, little Johnny, is force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. Mother Nature works like this. Um, capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity. Everything is either centrifugal divergence or centripetal convergence. Magnetism is the dielectric field, just like uh, ice is the field of water. And ice would be the field of the expression of water under low temperature. Yeah? A little Johnny would understand that. Well, little Johnny, magnetism is just like ice. Magnetism is the field of expression of dielectricity under the presence of the loss of its energy or inertia, which manifests these uh, three-dimensional force vector, literally a three-dimensional S-curve. And then you'd explain the interior geometry of uh, a toroid, and the respective conjugate geometry of the universe is uh, the toroid and the hyperboloid, and which both superimposed upon one another form a sphere. Hyperboloid is an hourglass shape. A toroid, of course, is a donut shape. Negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. And together they form the conjugate geometry of the entire universe. Electricity is not an autonomous field modality. It's literally phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. So we know electricity is just a hybrid conjunction of dielectricity and magnetism working to form. And of course, all fields are either circular or they're longitudinal or they're transverse, just like light. Light is a coaxial circuit. There's another primer. All of, and this is not my position, by the way, this is a fact that's undeniable. All of quantum is built upon, by their own words and admission, built upon their understanding of the nature, what the hell light is. But they have no idea what light is. They think that light's an emission, and it's a particle, or a wave, or a wave-particle duality. And of course, a duality means an inherent contradiction. Mother Nature does not deal in dualities. No way, no damn how. Absolutely not. Light's not an emission. Light doesn't travel. It doesn't travel from point A to point B. It's not a particle, and it's not a wave. Waves don't even exist. Waves are not things. Waves are what things do. Yeah? Light is none of these things. If you actually start out with faulty suppositions, the primer or the foundation of quantum. This is not my opinion. You could find this on Wikipedia. Quantum is based upon our understanding of what light is and how it works. Well, they don't even know what light is. It's not an emission. It's not a particle. It's not a wave. It's not a wave-particle duality. There are no dualities in nature. Light doesn't have a speed. The so-called speed is a rate of induction. It's just like the speed of sound. We all have heard the speed of sound, breaking the sound barrier. Well, sound is not a speed, it's a rate of induction of the transverse uh, frequency of sound, the vibration or perturbation of the nitrogen and oxygen, i.e. air. Nothing emits sound. Well, sure. Conventionally, we've never thought about that, and you never thought about that either, but nothing emits sound. We actually set up a vibration through the release of energy, and then, of course, the air vibrates at a set frequency, but nothing is being emitted. There's a fly buzzing around here, right? Yeah, okay, that's okay. It's summertime. There's always a fly that makes its way into the house. 
But I mean, the primer of the entire universe is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. The conjugate geometry of the universe is the, the hyperboloid and the torus. Everything is centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, force and motion, inertia and acceleration. It's literally that simple. That's, I mean, how long did it take me to say that? Ten seconds? That's the foundation of all field mechanics, which is the structure for the entire universe. If you can't explain it simply, you don't actually understand it, which is a correct quote. You can explain all of this uh, in countless uh, primers of understanding uh, the nature of suffering. It's the identification phenomenology. Um, without a primer, nothing is understandable. But it's so insanely important to have a logical, wise, intelligent, accurate uh, primer for any field of study. Whether that be uh, ontology, uh, monism, understanding Plotinus, understanding ancient Egyptian, understanding uh, Pali, trying to understand what, what the hell the Platonists meant when they wrote, the, ever tried reading the Parmenides? The best Greek scholars and the best universities, I don't know what it means, you know, there are countless books trying to explain what the hell is being said in the Parmenides. Well, so, well you translated it, didn't you, you pathetic scum? Yes, we did. I'm a prestigious Greek scholar. But you don't understand what... No, I'm able to translate it, but I don't know what the hell it's saying. This is not an exaggeration. Go try reading the Parmenides. Uh, Theoria Philosophia Naturalis, Rodro Bos. I dare you to read a page of that. It's a free download on archive.org, by the way. It's in English. Well, the right half is anyway. The other half is in Latin. I dare you to read that. You won't even make it through a paragraph. Well, I have no idea what this is saying. Countless people reported, I thought you were lying, you know, you said I couldn't understand this, but without a primer, you can't, but if you have a primer, then everything is open. This is the clavis, sort of the primer to understanding any abstruse topic, whether it be ontology, metaphysics, Plotinus, ancient Egyptian, um, metaphysics in general, actually. Also, too, physics. I mean, physics and metaphysics are not two different things. They're just the, uh, the head and the coin, the head and the tail side of the same silver of the same coin. They're not two. If anybody ever tells you that physics is one thing and metaphysics is another, turn around and run because that person is a retard. They're just the head side and the tail side of the same silver of the same coin. They're not two different things at all. But if a primer is a foundation based in nature, facts, logic, and wisdom, without it, nothing on top of that foundation can be true, logical, accurate. It becomes so inherently contradictory, just as is quantum. These people invent nonsensical uh, rubbish to, uh, to uh, and it's just a belief system. It's really a religion. It, it absolutely, if, you, if you've read of many articles from these idiots of quantum as I have, I mean, you just, you know, if you have any intelligence at all, you're like, these people have no idea. And it's okay not to know. But the problem with the telling people you do know or deluding yourself that you know is that no one has ever gone looking for the answers to things that they think they already know the answer to. Nobody has ever done that. You know, if you know your car is parked in the driveway, you know, because you parked it there, right? You don't go looking for your car because you think you know where it is. It's right out there in the driveway. No one ever goes looking for something they think they know the answer to. These hubristic fools that have built a false primer of the nature of reality, whether that be ancient Greek or understanding Plotinus or metaphysics or ancient Egyptian or what I've studied and translated now for decades, ancient Pali, they're clueless without a primer. But when you have a primer, and unfortunately, the most important things of studying in the world, which these are, and you may not agree, but I don't really care, there are no primers out there. Uh, this is a reason why I find it actually so, like a, a reason I create. A lot of people said I wouldn't be able to create this, is that because no one's ever made something like this before. They haven't. Other people say, sure, they're like, no, go point to one. You, it doesn't exist. People thought, well, you can't do that. That's too lofty of a goal. Well, I created, created it, and there it is. This is a primer for a lot of different stuff. But I plan on creating a lot of other primers. I've created countless primers uh, for original Buddhism. Uh, which Gautama called uh, uh, Brahmayana, Path to the Absolute. Buddhism was nothing more than a neo sramanic movement. But everything you... Uh, and I'm going to quote Dr. Ananda Kitish Kumaraswamy here, who knew 27 languages and wrote endless dozens of books and hundreds of articles, famously said, Buddhism today is more, most famous for everything it originally never taught. True words have never been said. I was actually friends with his son, Rama P. Kumaraswamy, who gave me the rights to all of his father's works. 
but um, there's a primer for uh, the nature of health, and of course I'm certainly no example of health, considering I'm fat and out of shape yet. Um, but I've done a lot of uh, a lot of deep thought on water and the nature of what water actually is, and uh, you know, since it's the antenna structure, if you will, for consciousness and also to the basis for uh, bad health. Um, you know, there's a primer for there's primers for countless things. There's really only about 20 important primers that anybody should actually have in their life. But with those, they actually have the keys to understanding because when you have the foundation you can readily understand what the hell is built on top. You have proper, accurate, wise, logical, and true clavis or primer foundation for understanding, then everything else becomes, if you have any brains at all. You have to be a complete idiot, and I don't mean this in a, in a bad way, but you have to have, be a complete idiot to have both a proper foundation and yet not understand what it rests upon. In other words, the foundation doesn't paint the picture. Kind of like a puzzle piece. You want to know a, a perfect example analogously? of a proper primer. You get one of those really ridiculous, and I don't do uh, puzzles, you know, the puzzle pieces. But once you get like, uh, you find four pieces of the puzzle, like I say, it's a thousand piece puzzle. You're like, oh crap, where does this stuff go? Crap! Where does it go? You find four pieces, and it all mushrooms from there, because that would be the primer. Another great thing, and I, I'm going to close the video out with this, is that and it was made six years ago. It's called The Imitation Game. It's a true story of, uh, of uh, Alan Turing. And he built a, uh, a primitive robot, if you will, to crack the Enigma machine, which Enigma machine had like, what, 100 million million different possibilities. And it's uncrackable, and they changed the keys every night. Everybody should watch The Imitation Game. Everybody. Shut the hell up, download it, watch it. I've seen it many times. Um, but... The machine, even though uh, he spent uh, the government's money of the UK countless uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds to build the machine, it was still uncrackable. Be but they only needed one primer, one thread. By the way, uh, I don't know if you've heard the term sutra. You know, the Buddhist texts and other uh, religious texts are called sutras. Sutra means thread. It means the thread that runs through it, like the thread. This, this would be the sutra of this, uh, this hemp robe. It's the thread that runs through and gives structure to everything. And a sutra is just a primer. When you're reading the sutras, and they're translated as uh, holy scripture or text, but it means thread. Anyway, the, the primer or the thread, they found out, it's a brilliant movie, and it's a the true story, mostly true, nearly entirely true, about uh, the Enigma machine, Alan Turing cracking the Enigma code is that they found no commonality in all the texts uh, transmitted by, uh, by uh, uh, World War II Germany. But they knew every morning that the weather was being broadcast, and at the top it would say something like weather report, and on the bottom it would say Heil, H-I-T-L-E-R, I don't want to say the word. But since they knew every morning Germany would broadcast the weather, they knew the last two words and the first two words, first two, that is they only had to plug in those words into Alan Turing's uh, machine. And those words every morning uh, were the basis for cracking all the codes, of the secret codes of Germany. Because they knew that that uh, foundation or primer, every morning, even though the codes were changed every night at midnight, that it would exist. And that's all they needed were those five words to crack every single top secret code transmitted by Germany because that was the thread that ran through. Every day it was changed, but they only needed to know that first message that was sent every day with the weather report, and that was the, uh, along with the machine, the primer for cracking all the codes, which helped England and the United States and the world win the war against Germany, because the Germans did not know we cracked the Enigma machine. There's a perfect uh, uh, example of a primer. Just like the puzzle piece, the thousand piece puzzle piece. You know, you, I don't know if you've ever done a, you know, a big puzzle piece. A, a puzzle, you know, assembling the, I haven't done one in decades and decades. But, you know, it's just impossible to start out with. But until you get like three or four pieces together, then phew, it all explodes. And uh, people don't have that in the areas of study or the things that are important. And that's the reason why I create primers. You know, they're accurate, logical, wise. They're based upon... Uh, uh, wisdom and understanding, and I don't care if you hate me, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, 
not into religion, not into belief systems. I'm into metaphysics, uh, wisdom, and understanding. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I don't give a, you know. Uh, sorry the uh, the final like uh, 30 seconds of my video got cut off there but uh, I was just uh, going to say because I went too long I was actually gonna make two videos out of this but uh, decided to make it one even though the one video is a half hour long uh, the only remaining uh, 30 seconds I said was that, uh, that uh, the primer is the most important thing uh, to have and uh, that's uh, completely regardless of what you study and um, I, I was kind of wary to make this video I thought it was too dry of a topic but it's actually an insanely important topic and no matter what the approval rate of this video is I, I never start out with making a video worried about what the approval rate is it's uh, what I want to make a video about and you know how important it is and, and I love like I said uh, from the start of this video I love making videos about things that other people don't make videos about that you don't uh, are not taught in high school or college, so on and so forth. But if you like this video, um, anything is greatly appreciated or nothing at all. You know, whatever you want, and uh, those are in the links below. And uh, I hope you all have a uh, wonderful week. Thank you. And yes, this hemp robe is actually very comfortable. I'm not wearing it for uh, effect. That, uh, the only reason I don't wear it in the summertime, and it is the summertime, but the, the temperature is radically different right now in the past 24 hours is because uh, it's too damn hot but uh, it's not hot right now and it's not hot sitting next to this virtual fireplace so have a great day and goodbye